Welcome to Desktop Prototyping Essentials and Framer. My name is Akram Khalid, and in this video, we're going to explore two additional default components. The two components we're looking at today are icons and loading indicators. If you are watching this video from YouTube, be sure to click the link in the description below to follow along in Framer. Before we begin, make sure to switch pages in the upper left corner to follow along with the correct part of the tutorial. An icon is a layer that contains a scalable vector graphic, better known as SVGs. With Framer, you can set the fill and the border styles. You can create your own custom icons using a graphic layer, but in our example, we'll be using Feather Icons, which is a collection of simply beautiful open source icons. Now to get things started, we're going to go ahead and select our icons page. And then in the top toolbar, let's go ahead and click the frame. And then within our icons page, go ahead and click and drag to create a rectangle. We're going to need to adjust the width and the height. So with the frame selected, I'll go ahead and adjust the width to 288 and the height to 52. With the frame selected, hit command two or control two to fit it to frame so that we can work closely with it. And for the fill, we can go ahead and disable what the default fill is. Now let's go ahead and work with some text. Hitting T on your keyboard or selecting the text button on the top bar, you can go ahead and switch to the text layer. And then within our frame, go ahead and click to type wallet. Let's go ahead and adjust the styles of our text. Selecting font, we're going to search for poppins. And then our style is going to be set to regular, followed by the size being set to 14. With the wallet layer selected, we can view the margins or position that it holds against its parent, which is the frame. Using the option key or the alt key, you can hover on the frame or any other element to see the different margins it holds. So in the align menu in the top right, go ahead and center it. And then for the left position, go ahead and select 48. This will give it a margin left of 48 pixels. Now it's time to start working with our icons. Go ahead and select I on your keyboard or select insert in the top bar. Let's search for feather icons in under public packages. We can go ahead and select it. Now we are required to install this package so we can go ahead and click the install button. This won't install anything to your desktop. It will simply install the package to the project you're working on. Going through the list of already created icons, you can see we've got plenty of different icons we can work with and all of them are designed beautifully. We can also view on the left navigation. We now have a components folder called feather icons with all the icons to work with. Go ahead and click the insert menu again and let's search for a credit card icon. I found the one that I want to use and we'll simply hit insert to get it onto our frame. Perfect. Let's go ahead and adjust the width and the height. I want to set both widths and height to 16 pixels. And then regarding our left position, let's go ahead and set it to 16. This will move the icon to the far left. And now to change the color of our icon, what we'll do is we'll double click on the icon and then change the fill to the black shared color. What we can work on next is duplicating this frame. Moving it up a bit, I will select the Option key or the Alt key and dragging our frame down to create a duplicate. And then I will change the text from Wallet to Transaction for our second frame. I'll also want to update the credit card icon. So hitting I on the keyboard, I'll search for Activity and insert a new icon. Getting rid of the old credit card icon. I'll now select the activity icon, shrinking the width and the height down to 16 pixels, adjusting the left margin to 16 pixels, and then double clicking on the icon to change the fill from the already default color to the black shared color. Now slowly getting ahead of ourselves, what I want to do is create a stack for our parent frame. A stack is pretty much a frame which allows our children to stack on top of each other or in a certain specific order. In our example here, I'll create a stack by having both of the frames selected, right clicking and selecting add stack, which allows us to interchange the position of our navigation links fairly easily. Now let's go ahead and create an active style for our first navigation. Select the frame and change the background to a blue 05. Selecting the wallet text layer, I'll go ahead and change the color to a shared color of blue 50. Along with selecting the icon, make sure you double tap on the icon and select blue 50 as well. Now go ahead and select the icons page and hit command 2 or control 2 to fit into frame. And then we'll select the entire stack 
move it to the far left and add it as a child to our left navigation. With the stack still selected, I want to change the top position to a number of 316. And then what we can do is start adding additional frames or links that are childs of our stacks. So I'll select the transaction frame and I'll copy paste it three more times to create three additional links. Selecting the stack, we do seem to have a problem. The height of our stack no longer matches the amount of frames we have. So the true height of our entire stack isn't matching with what it currently is. We can adjust this by selecting fit content underneath the height and the width of our stack. Fit content will auto adjust the height and the width of all the children within a specific frame. So if you ever add additional layers within a frame, you can hit fit content to automatically adjust that. Now, because we adjusted the height, be sure to update the position top again, and we'll set that to 316. Okay, so the final thing we need to do is update the last three frames so that they all have their own unique icon as well as their own unique text. I've went ahead and completed the last three frames. We've got bills, investing, and transfer. The very last default component we'll be covering are loading indicators. With Framer, we have the ability to add loading indicators to our prototypes. We also have the power to present different indicator styles, as well as link a layer to automatically transition on timeout. To get started, we'll need to create two separate frames. The first frame will represent the loading indicator, and the second frame will represent the data that has loaded. We only have our first frame created for now, but if we preview it, it has a simple scroll effect which goes through the different transactions. Don't worry if you don't know too much about scrolls, we'll definitely cover it in future episodes. Go ahead and close it out of the preview, and if we select our initial state, we'll hit Ctrl C, Ctrl V, or Command C, Command V to create an exact copy of our frame. Selecting both of these frames, let's hit Command 2 or Control 2 to fit both of them into frame. And now we see the transaction stack that we have on the bottom, which the scroll is linking to. We'll go ahead and adjust it just to center it. And for the copied frame or the second frame we created, we'll change the name to loaded state. This one will represent the final look, which will list the different transactions we have. For our first frame, however, the initial state, we'll want to add a loading indicator showing that we're fetching the data. Go ahead and select initial state, hit control 2, command 2 to fit it into frame. Then selecting the transaction scroll frame, I'm going to turn down the opacity to zero, and then I'll want to adjust the transaction scrolls position. I'll want to move it down by negative 20 pixels. Holding shift, we can then adjust the position by increments of 10. Hitting the down arrow twice allows me to reach negative 20. Or in the top right panel, I can just select the bottom and have it set to negative 20 pixels. Next, we'll want to insert the loading indicator. So with the top bar, we'll go ahead and select insert. Go ahead and erase anything we have. And then selecting default components, we'll search for loading. This will provide the loading indicator. We'll go ahead and select insert. And then let's adjust the position so that it is centered in the middle of our recent transactions. Now that we have dragged the loading indicator inside the recent transaction frame, we have the power to align it in any way that we want. So if we align it to the left, you can see that it's going to be contained within the recent transactions, similar to if we align it to the right or even centered. It's going to be relative to the parent, which is the recent transactions. Now for our top, let's set the position to 346. Now regarding our options, we've got three different styles we can select. We've got the dots, we've got material, and we've got iOS. My favorite is the dots, so we'll leave it as such. And then for our color, We'll select the blue 50 shared color and then we also have a duration for infinity and timeout for now let's just view how it looks setting the duration to infinity meaning the loading indicator will never stop you can see that it has that cool three dot effect but what we want it to do is to have a timeout so after a certain time it's going to go away with duration set to timeout we'll set the time to three seconds and fade out to yes let's go ahead and preview and now what should happen is after three seconds, the loading indicator should fade out. Let's go ahead and close the preview now. And what our next effort should be is creating that transition between the two different states for when the loading indicator is complete. I'll select both states and fit both of them to frame. And then selecting the loading indicator, we can hit L on the keyboard or we can select that zap icon and then create a link 
to our loaded state frame simply by directing the arrow to the loaded state frame. Once that's done, we'll select a timeout transition. And then in the top right under interactions, you can see we have a new timeout of transition. If we select on transition, you can see the trigger is timeout, the target is loaded state, and the type is magic motion. We haven't covered much about magic motion, but we will in future episodes. Go ahead and select animation and switch the type from spring to ease. Go ahead and close out of that, and then selecting the initial state, we'll go and preview in the top right. And now what should happen is the loading indicator should show for 3 seconds, and then transition to our final state. We can go ahead and hit the refresh icon to see it one more time. And it looks like it might be going a bit too fast. Let's check out why that is. Let's select the loading indicator, and then view the time. Looks like the time is set to 2, we'll update that to 3 instead. Perfect. And now we can scroll through our transactions, emulating a prototype where we're fetching the data, and then displaying it on the screen. This does mark the completion of learning about icons and loading indicators.